In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good evening, sisters and brothers. Good evening, Father. And welcome to this Eucharistic celebration. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and suffer for ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and thanksgiving have shown us a remedy for sin, look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we, who are bowed down by, on, by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you, in the name of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. God spoke all these words. He said, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no gods except me. You shall not utter the name of the Lord your God to misuse it, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the man who utters his name to misuse it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given to you. You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbour, you shall not covet your neighbour's house, you shall not covet your neighbour's wife or his servant, man or woman, or his ox or his donkey, or anything that is his. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The law of the Lord is perfect. It revives the soul. The rule of the Lord is to be trusted. It gives wisdom to the simple. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The precepts of the Lord are right. They gladden the heart. The command of the Lord is clear. It gives light to the eyes. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. The fear of the Lord is holy, abiding forever. The decrees of the Lord are truth, and all of them just. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. They are more to be desired than gold, than the purest of gold, and sweeter are they than honey, than honey from the comb. You, Lord, have the message of eternal life. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. While the Jews demand miracles and the Greeks look for wisdom, here are we preaching a crucified Christ. To the Jews, an obstacle that they cannot get over. To the pagans, madness. 
but to those who have been called, whether they are Jews or Greeks, a Christ who is the power and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons. And the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well. Scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeon sellers, Take all this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, zeal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you have done? And Jesus answered, destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, it has taken 46 years to build this sanctuary. Are you going to raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this. And they believed the scripture and the words he had said. During his stay in Jerusalem for the Passover, many believed in his name when they saw the signs that he gave. But Jesus knew them all and did not trust himself to them. He never needed evidence about any man. He could tell what a man had in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, sisters and brothers. Does anybody ever get angry? I know you get mad. Parents, have you ever had one of those moments when you've had a conversation with your child and you just want to scream, to shout? There have been times when you've been so mad that you did shout. So what makes you angry? What makes you sad? Mad, I mean. Today we see a surprising story in John's Gospel where Jesus gets really angry to the point where he starts overthrowing tables and driving people out of the temple with a whip. The Gospel of John is unique in, in that he has Jesus moving back and forth between Galilee and Jerusalem throughout the entire Gospel. And we have to take these stories in pairs and contrast them. Early in the Gospel of John, we saw Jesus at the wedding in Cana, where we saw the first sign of the kingdom of God, turning water into wine. A glimpse of what God is all about in the world. There we saw that God is about abundance. In today's Gospel, Jesus gets mad. Did this story surprise you a little bit? We often imagine Jesus as one who's, who doesn't snap at people in a fit of rage. We don't think of him as a God being angry. We like the God at the wedding feast in Cana who gives us the really good wine in abundance. We like the God of grace and love and forgiveness. The church throughout history has tended to swing 
to one extreme or the other regarding God. The fact is, however, that if you look up anger or wrath in the Bible, it is often more associated with God. And it, it occurs quite often. God gets mad a lot, and that can scare us. So God is both sides of this equation. That's because God is the loving parent who wants the best for his children. And a good parent, we know, sets up boundaries to protect the children. When the children disobey and do the things that the parent knows will harm them, the parent becomes angry. Anger is what psychologists call a secondary emotion. It is like physical pain. Pain is a good thing because it alerts us to the fact there is an injury or that something is not right in our body. So anger is like this. When we become angry, it is a sign that something has been violated. It is a proximity sensor, or maybe in our time, the track together apps to alert us that we have been in places where an infected person has been. But getting angry isn't bad. It's what you do with anger that makes it wrong. St. Paul said in Ephesians, be angry and do not sin. So one thing that gets most of us angry is when we are violated. Most of the time when we get mad, it is because people have violated my sense of what defines me in my pride and ego. Maybe you taste me or public ridicule me or attack my reputation. Sirens blare, intruder, intruder. And my anger is a signal that my pride and ego has been hurt. So you should be angry when someone violates you because you are a child of God. So most parents have the sensors for their children. Just mess with a child and you will see mommy show up. But what about the people that Jesus taught us to love? Do our sensors go up when the poor and helpless in society are used and abused by those with money and power? We should get angry. So why did Jesus get angry in this story? He came into the temple and saw that it has been turned into a marketplace. The temple was designed to be a place that represents the presence of God. The temple was the place for the Jews. It was holy ground where people were supposed to come to set their eyes on God and put their priorities in order. To realize that they were blessed to be a blessing for the nations. Instead, the temple leaders saw the Passover feast as a way to extort the poor and those who had traveled great distances. These people couldn't bring their own animals to the temple for sacrifice, so the temple leaders charged exorbitant amounts of money and cheated the currency exchange in order to line the temple coffers. This violated God's senses, and Jesus got mad and did something about it. It is all right to get angry sometimes if we're getting mad about the right things. The temple leaders asked the obvious question to Jesus, by what authority do you do this? Who do you think you are? And Jesus said that if they destroyed this temple, he would raise it up in three days. John tells us that Jesus was referring to his own body. John started his gospel by saying that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He pitched his tent among us. So the presence of God is not about a building. It's not about power or money or success. The presence of God is with us. It's the fact that Jesus emptied himself of all those things and became a servant. He let himself be ridiculed, misunderstood, and crucified so that we might have life. As the church, the body of Christ, we are called to love the world the way God loves the world. We are called to love the things that God loves and get, to get angry or mad when people hurt and abuse the weak and the poor and the outcast. 
So as we continue our Lenten journey, let us follow God's commandment of love, especially caring for the least of our brothers and sisters. With blessed rage, we now profess our faith. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we reflect on the story of Christ's wrath in the temple, it is a reminder to each one of us, especially at this time of Lent, to examine our conscience and cleanse our lives of vices and sin by prayer, fasting and works of charity, so as to be worthy of His unconditional and self-sacrificing love for us. With grateful hearts, we pray. For the Church, that God will guide and protect all priests who bring the love of Christ through the sacraments to the faithful. We pray to the Lord. God ever faithful, God ever merciful, God, God of your people, people hear, hear our, our prayer. For world leaders, that they will work together effectively to bring, to find a peaceful and non-violent end to the crisis and civil unrest in Myanmar, and also to help poorer nations to get access to the COVID vaccines. We pray to the Lord. God, God ever faithful, faithful God, God ever, ever merciful, God, God, God of your people, people hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are suffering, that they will be strengthened spiritually by the sacraments and the word of God. We pray to the Lord. God, God ever, ever faithful, faithful God, God ever, ever merciful, God, God of your people, people hear our prayer. prayer. For our faith community, that we will be sincere in worshipping God, and showing care and love for the people he has placed in our lives. We pray to the Lord. God, God ever faithful, God, God ever merciful, God, God of your people, people hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. God, God ever faithful, God, God ever merciful, merciful. God, God of your people, people hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for your merciful love. During this time of Lent, may all of us repent, change our sinful ways, and deepen our relationship with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands have become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon from all, our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's really right and just to urge it in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things 
that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, have been the gospel of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Your holy, your indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness, make holy therefore this case we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly in this passion with bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and end of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have it is worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partake of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity to the presence of Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us hear his command and form by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. We graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace, and union in course with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with and your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold Jesus, the bread of life. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in the mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful, and in your kindness, grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.